Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello of the 176th District in Monroe County. Today I'm really thrilled to be here at Pocono Urgent Care and I'm with my guest is Dr. John Paul Romes. Doctor, pleasure, pleasure being here. Thank, thank, thank you, you for allowing me here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank yeah. you for coming. What gave you the idea? But first let's talk a little bit about your background then, and then we'll talk about uh, what gave you the idea of coming into Monroe and building your two urgent cares. Well, I've been in an emergency room in Pennsylvania, uh, emergency room physician in Pennsylvania for uh, just over, actually, 11 years now. Wow. And towards the last several years, uh, actually for all 10 years, I, you, I recognized that there were so many people waiting more and more and more longer hours in the emergency departments. All, and I've been in emergency departments throughout the state. And so there, there was such a large need for a, a middle level of care, something beyond the primary care level and something below the emergency department level. Uh, because I, I, on a daily basis in the emergency departments, and this is throughout the country, about 80 to 85 percent of people that walk into an emergency department could really be taken care of somewhere else. Wow. Uh, and and I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to sort of transfer the skill sets that we have as an emergency physician into an urgent care center that could just be put into a, a retail area mm -hmm. where pa patients could just drive by, see it, and come in and not have the long waits, the three, four, five hour waits. I've been in emergency departments where the, the waits were easily 18, 20, 24 hours yeah. before you were seen by a physician. And for, for a cough or a cold or an ankle sprain or a broken wrist, that's just that's too that's just too long to wait. And, and I guess the the cost of going into an emergency room versus, you know, going into to somewhere outside of that realm. I guess there, there's a huge cost, isn't there? With the differential, there's a tremendous cost. The Center for Medicaid Service, Medicare and Medicaid Services publishes annually the average cost of, of an emergency department visit. And for the last several years, the average price of an emergency department visit assuming you don't get admitted, which is even more expensive, is between $1,300 and $1,500 wow. for a visit. And urgent cares are easily one-tenth the cost of that. Wow. You could walk into a, an emergency room with something minor, be waiting three, four, five, or six hours, and probably being charged six to seven times, even common cold or something, than rather than walk into an urgent very, care. Very much so. And, and, and because in an emergency department, what people don't realize is you're not just getting charged by the physician. You have the lab fees. You have the charges for the x-rays. You have the charges for the facility that you actually walked into called a facility fee. So these, these charges continue to stack up. And then all of a sudden, you have a visit that may be several thousand dollars if anything significant was done. Yeah. And, and at, the, at Pocono Urgent Care, we can do so many of those same, offer so many of those same services for a small fraction of that same price and offer the exact same care that you would get in the emergency department because the providers that we have at Pocono Urgent Care are, are trained and experienced in the emergency department. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And um, you know, we talk about the emergency room and, and our hospital in, in here in Monroe County has the third busiest emergency room in the state outside of Philly and Pittsburgh. That's what we recognized that early on. We have been vacationing here in the Poconos for about a decade uh, at, the, at, at, the, some, uh, at the ski resorts. And our friends would come here and would tell us, Jean, after they came back from the vacations, and we would notice this also, some of the kids would get injured and they would have to go to the hospital. And they would say, we waited four or five hours. And I was like, that's, that's understandable. And then when I started looking into the hospital here, it is, it is a tremendous hospital with a huge volume and lots and lots of patients, especially because of the, it, it, the re, it being a resort community and so Correct. many people come through. And so these, these people, they don't have their physicians here because they're, a lot of them are traveling uh, and, and visiting or don't have physicians because as, as a rural area, Poconos just hasn't had an influx of new physicians for the last couple of decades which is common for rural and semi-rural areas throughout the country. What's not common, however, is that we've grown. Our population in the last 20 years has doubled. And so we haven't had the extra for the physicians. You doubled your population. And on any given weekend, you could be the third largest city in the in the Commonwealth because of the, like you said earlier, the tourist destination. Exactly. And so one of the most common phrases we hear is, is I can't get in to see my physician or I don't have a physician. 
Yeah. And because of that, we wanted to bring a, a new way of caring to the to the Poconos, some a, a place that you could come in for any of your acute illnesses uh, and ha not be turned away if you had a laceration or a broken ankle or something more significant uh, and be sent to the e emergency department. Because as an emergency department physician, I, I would find that just exceedingly yeah. unfair if somebody came in and was turned away because yeah. the, the, the problem was, was too acute for them and they sent them to the ER. We, we pride ourselves here at Pocono Urgent Care for being able to take care of almost anything that comes in our doors. You know, sometimes you also, you, you walk into an ER and it's kind of hectic and busy. And you know, of course, the, I, just me speaking, I would think that the, the, the critical folks get the most attention, but sometimes because of that, maybe they might miss something because it, their minds are somewhere. I don't know, I'm just, uh, just me thinking. That is a very common problem. Being an emergency physician, I, I've seen it too often where, where because the, the are, there are so many distractions to the physician and to the staff, there are people yelling, screaming, kicking, and then at the same time you have to come in and take care of somebody's colds or, or be looking at an x-ray on the computer. And all these distractions can actually make for a very high, high level of unfortunate malpractice that can occur. Yeah. Uh, and that, and that, that's why emergency, emergency medicine is one of the most highly litigious uh, realms of medicine. Very, very tough. And I, I could see it, you know, just in your mind how somebody with something might, might seem minor and, and, and that can happen. So coming here, um, it would, I, I think you, you tend to not to get the, that, not to lose, if you know what I'm saying. Exactly. You, you, you get to, you get, I believe you might get a, a, a if, for something that might be major and you might not have realized it. We also, we, we pride ourselves here in spending a lot more time with patients. Mm -hmm. As an, on, when I have my emergency physician hat and I'm in the ER seeing 30, 40, 50 patients in a day, you have to do, and, and then some of them are very highly acute patients with lots of medical issues and you're, and you're trying to manage CAT scans and x-rays and different specialists, and then you're having to run to somebody with a nosebleed and then somebody else with a cold and an ankle there you sprain. Go. You have so many different hats yeah. you're wearing you don't have time to be able to spend to individual patients and give them time that they yeah. need. Yeah. And it, in the urgent care uh, side, we can we spend easily 20, 30 minutes, th for, and even longer with a lot of patients, going over the individual problems. We have a lot more time to help diag uh, diagnose the issues. And it, it just, it, it leaves for a much better experience with the patients because they leave with more knowledge of what was going on with them. Mm -hmm. They leave in a much shorter time and they leave after ha having a bill that's sometimes one tenth the cost. And so it's a, it's a much more pleasing experience in general and you don't have nearly so many uh, distractions as you would have in a mercy parliament. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, I, you're the only doctor, how many doctors are, are in your practice here? At Pocono Urgent Care we have two locations, Stroudsburg mm -hmm. uh, in the Home Depot mm -hmm. and Target Shopping Center and here in Marshalls Creek at the Price Chopper Shopping Center. I, I am the primary physician uh, for, and I have been for the first two years and, the, and now I've brought on Dr. Daniel Dupre. Okay. Dr. Daniel Dupre has over 25 years of emergency uh, medicine experience, um, ah, I was gonna... and uh, formerly of Pocono Medical Center mm -hmm. uh, in the emergency department, and we we also have several mid-level providers, which mm -hmm. are physician assistants mm -hmm. and nurse practitioners. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also been honored to bring in uh, a physician assistant with ex with over 10 years of experience wow. at Pocono Hospital in the mm -hmm. emergency department, Corey Gentile, and he's been uh, he's an ex exceedingly capable and experienced emergency medicine uh, physician assistant. So you have the, 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 I was trying to get it, that you have the ER, like you have the ER experience, and that's absolutely fabulous. Yes. That they can walk in here, and if it is a true emergency, they can spot it right away. Exactly. What you want is to walk into any urgent care, whether it be here in the Poconos or in Phoenix, Arizona. You want to have a provider who is capable of r r not being able to treat everything in the urgent care because people come in with chest pain. Yep. But you want them to be able to recognize everything that could come in those doors yeah. and be able to handle and n have a treatment plan for them. Whether that treatment plan exists primarily in the urgent care or that treatment ban plan include a transfer to the emergency department for the highest acuity patients. Doc, let's talk about some of the um, services, you know, some of the rooms that you have here. Give me a 
I walked in, I might need an x-ray. Because some folks, you might think it's just a common cold or whatever, but all the services that you do have, the machinery that you have in there, the, your EKG or whatever else. What we have is we have, uh, on the, we have five treatment rooms, one mm -hmm. of which is, is a larger, what we call a procedure room, that can handle higher acuity cases, larger mm -hmm. lacerations, people that come in with chest pain and need an EKG, we have that capability. We ha also have a fu fully digital x-ray suite which will take x-rays of any kinds and have them on a digital uh, processor which puts them on a screen and we can actually show the patients the x-rays because I'm always, I'm always trying to teach the patients their problems and what's wrong with them so I'll, yeah. I'll show them the x-rays. We also have many in-house labs, uh, rapid strep tests, urine analyses, urine pregnancy tests, monos tests. We have numerous tests that we can do in-house. And for those tests that we can't perform in-house, for example, if you wanted a cholesterol, or yeah. for example, if you wanted your uh, blood checked for some Lyme disease, we draw the blood here, and then we have a lab company that picks them up every day and will result, give the results within one to two days. Mm -hmm. We also offer uh, nebulizer and breathing treatments for pa patients that come in with bad asthma or emphysema, and they can't breathe, we can give them oxygen, we can give them breathing treatments that will help get them through that attack and then we can prescribe naturally medications that will make them feel better in the longer term. Uh, and if they need a chest x-ray, again, it's done right here on the spot. You've been watching Legislative Report. We'll return in a moment. Did you know that there are six ornate bronze chandeliers hanging in the house chamber? The four large chandeliers are estimated to weigh three tons each. Yet these iron and brass fixtures painted in 18 karat gold manage to dangle effortlessly. It takes 168 light bulbs to light the large chandeliers and 84 light bulbs on each of the smaller chandeliers. As you can imagine, changing the light bulbs when they burn out is far from easy. Workers must build scaffolding in order to reach their 1,450 light bulbs. Today, special long life, low wattage energy saving bulbs are used to lessen the amount of times that the light bulbs will need to be replaced. Now you know. Welcome back to the Legislative Report. My guest is Dr. Romes with Pocono Urgent Care. Doc, you know, we've discussed quite a bit of things here, but one thing that's amazing, the locations that you've picked, that I think that, you know, you really did your homework because beyond these locations where the traffic always backs up. So anyone that's above you will have a tremendous amount of problems if they had to travel beyond and for many many years 209 has been has been gridlock and also on 611 with the, with the, at the Stroud uh, location as well Talk, tell me about your choices for the locations well the locations nothing beats location 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 yeah. I tell you what so so often in life uh, it, it's exact some, something just plops right into your lap what and and our two locations both in Stroudsburg and here in Marshall's Creek were born of basically me driving up and down each of those roads well over a hundred times over the course of several months just looking 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 for the ideal location uh, I know I knew Marshall's Creek was a location that I wanted to put in urgent care because there was there is so little medical care anywhere between the hospital in Stroudsburg or on the Stroudsburg East Stroudsburg line all the way up to Milford there's there's very little medical care and that entire strip of land has a tremendous amount of population Certainly. that has been growing so I knew that we wanted to put a place here, and it was just a matter of where. When the flea market went down, we hap I happened to be getting a burger at Wendy's, and I saw it going down, and I knew that was exactly the spot because it was right above the bypass, right above the bottleneck, and everybody, ha because I, having been at that bottleneck well over 100 times in Marshall's Creek, people would just sit there for the longest yeah. time. And so when, that mar when the flea market went down, and I knew there was a shopping center being built, I knew that I wanted to be in that shopping center. With the same location, uh, the same type of situation was in Bar uh, was in, in Barnesville. In Bartonsville, at the at the new intersection there, I knew that strip of land on 611 would be ideal for an urgent care center. So I went up and down that many, many, many times, and we found a perfect location right in the Target and Home Depot shopping center, right before it bottlenecks as you enter on 611 into That's town. Right. Right. So the, I was standing there in traffic for the longest time, and I just looked up, and there was a spot that was open, the former Talbot's women's clothing store, and it had closed down. And I said, and I was just sitting there for 10 minutes. That's where I want to go. 
uh, and having been up and down that road many times. So we have excellent visibility in both locations and both are at, place, at places where the traffic pattern will just stop yeah. uh, right thereafter and people are, they just say, might as well, I, I've been feeling sick, might as well just come on in. Yeah. You know, when your loved one is hurt or sick, you want to get them to medical care as quick as possible. You don't want to sit in a vehicle. You want to get, that. Exactly. so to me, you, you've really addressed that issue. It's, it's interesting because anybody up here in Country Club of the Poconos, any of these communities up in this area, the, the hospital, as the crow flies, is not a very long distance, yeah. but it is a long time to get there. Yeah. However you want to get there, they're, they're, you can easily spend 20 to 30 minutes minimum yeah. in getting just a few miles down yeah. the road. And opening up that, uh, that access to uh, Procono Urgent Care, we've opened up a tremendous amount of capability for just people to just come in here and be in, out, and even in the amount of time it would have taken them to get to the hospital mm -hmm. for their cold or cough or ankle sprain, something that really didn't need to be in the emergency department in the first place, they could just drop on by here, be seen, be registered, be out the door, go and get a cup of coffee and a bagel at the grocery store, at Price Chopper and be on their way in less time than it would have taken them to re you know, get to the hospital and be registered. Wow. Uh, let's talk about your website and the information that you have available on that website. What we're trying to do at Pocono Urgent Care again is sort of bring an innovation of medicine to the Poconos. And by that I mean it's, it's not a new form of medicine really. It, it's just bringing the most modern treatment modalities and the treatment processes and thoughts uh, and basically bring, a, bring in a, fresh, uh, a breath of fresh air to medicine in the Poconos because so much of medicine nowadays has, has been constrained and confined by necessity. You have 30 to 40 patients you have to see in a day now. You have a eight hour day because there's one hour off for lunch. You have only a limited time to see those 30 to 40 patients per day. So that's why so much of modern medicine is a four minute visit to the doctor. You have barely any time to even say hi and address your own issue uh, that is first on your mind, much less the other 10 issues that might yeah. pop up. Yeah. So what we've done here is we're, we, our goal is to spend more time with patients because we don't have, the, we're able to do that. We're also want, wanting to basically give them a lot more education about the, the medical process. It's much easier to explain, to spend 15 minutes and educating a patient and telling them why they don't need an antibiotic right. than it is three minutes, here's your prescription and you're out the door. That's a convenient medicine, but not the best medicine. So what we've done is we've, we've transferred that desire to educate and let the patients know about the problems that they have into our website where I have numerous video blogs that I've created on the website that educate the patients about the medical problems that are foremost on the community right now. Flu season, tick season, uh, cough and cold season, the, the various illnesses that hit the area, rashes, poison ivy. There's many different topics you can learn from our website and also our Facebook account. We're trying to embrace this modern era mm. of social media. So on our Facebook account, I'm always updating that as much as I can with modern uh, topics that are interesting to the patients. Wow. How about innovations in, in healthcare? And I know you, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but you, get, you know, I, I know the computer and, the, and, and everything, all that information. Let's talk about this. It. In the modern, there's a concept of what's called informatics. And in medical informatics, it's the, the idea of making medicine as modern as you can and embracing the different technologies that come with this modern age of medicine. For example, our uh, clinics at Pocono Urgent Care were a, what we call a paperless system. We have a completely electronic medical record. None of the, uh, no, gone is the day of the, the 5,000 file cabinet. Uh, Folding, you know, hanging folders hanging in a large room behind the, the front desk. Everything that we have is all digital. We have pads and iPads and uh, computers that we can take into the room and converse with the patients and then we can document our medical interactions on that and even show the patients various other topics uh, and their x-rays on right. that same pad. Everything is wireless except for the discharge paperwork that we print out at the very end. There's other ways of taking care of uh, in, in the world of modern medicine that are coming down the pike and that are being practiced in more rural areas actually also. It's called telemedicine. Telemedicine is a concept of basically having the patient at one site, 
having a camera in between and the provider sits in the clinic or in the hospital and is able to give advice to that patient on the, on the distant site. Sometimes there's a nurse at the far site or sometimes it's just the patient themselves and they're interacting over the internet, whether that be over a distance of five miles or 500 miles. The, this type of medicine is very common in the more rural areas wow. where you'll have clinics many hours apart and only one provider uh, that's able to take care of those patients. Hmm. Doc, suppose I was a, um, I walked into the 611 site, but I really live out here, uh, let's say Middle Smithfield, and, and um, so I was, I was there, I was, t I was treated, a year later, I, 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 I'm here. You have, you have access to those records, I'm assuming by computer, correct? Exactly, and that's one of the great advantages of an electronic system. We have, our charts are being electronic. A person can walk into our location in the Home Depot Target Shopping Center in Stroudsburg, get a chest x-ray. Three months later, they come into our center here in the Price Chopper Shopping Center in Marshalls Creek, and they have an ankle sprain. Or they, or they have another cough, for example. Well, we want to have a comparison of an x-ray. Well, it just so happens that our center in Stroudsburg has a chest x-ray from three months ago. We can perform another one and do a comparison and say, hey, something has changed. Same thing for the medical records themselves. If somebody comes into our center here in Marshalls Creek, it's far more easy to come in and you don't have the you don't have the t extra time to register because you've already been registered at our center in Mar Stroudsburg. Mm -hmm. So the, the visit is knocked out by 10 minutes right there because the registration process is much simpler yeah. because everything is electronic and able to be interchanged between all of our centers. Wow. Now this is, uh, I'm gonna put on a different hat now because I'm the chair of the Labor and Industry Committee. And so when I see uh, businesses open up and hire people, I love that because you're creating jobs. Between the two, uh, between the two sites, how many employees do you have? We have a, between the two sites about twenty employees now. Wow. What recommendations? And I'm going to say loaded gun because you can come back with anything. I want you. To, I want to know what recommendations do, do you have for for the state? What should we be looking at to try to help you grow, basically? Well, de definitely, I think uh, uh, incentives for small business are uh, in in, op in setting up the business uh, and being in and being able to. Uh, operate the different uh, systems that we have, whether it be electronic, uh, if there are incentives for electronic medical mm -hmm. records, for example, that's an important thing for medical clinics. Uh, and, and the government offers actually many incentives for electronic uh, medical records because it's actually a very expensive process. Sure. It's, that's why so many clinics stick to the paper charting system because it can cost thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to set up an, a, a paperless system like we have, for yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, and if there are tax incentives for that or reimbursements incentives uh, in the side of, for example, Medicare uh, has incentives for electronic mm -hmm. systems. Uh, and it, to be able to offer those, it, it's a tremendous benefit to, uh, to moving people towards this more electronic age. Sure, sure. What, uh, as far as coverage, what, you take all coverage, what, what, you know, medical coverage? We take most of the major insurances in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our largest provider in the Stroudsburg area, for example, is, are the Blue Cross products. Mm -hmm. And we take almost all the Blue, Blue Cross products. We have United Healthcare, mm -hmm. we have Cigna, we have Aetna. Uh, as having been in the military, for, in the Army for nine years, I definitely take TRICARE. Uh, so we take TRICARE both for active and retired. We have Medicare, of course. Okay. Uh, so we take numerous insurances, and, and there are many people in this area, definitely, that don't even have insurance. Right. So what we offer is what's called a prompt pay discount. Dealing with insurances on a, a daily basis, you might see the patient, process the paperwork, and after numerous hurdles, the actual reimbursement that you get from insurance may come 90 days later, 45 yeah. days later. So what we offer is a prompt pay discount for ca people who have no insurance, and there are many of those people, who come in and, and at Pocono Urgent Care, our cash pay price is $120. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that sets a bar that's so easily achievable by so many people. And what that gets you is that gets you an extra. It's not extra. A lot of places will charge you a, a minimal amount and then a la carte charges on top of that. Right. And by the time you walk out the door, it's $500. Correct. Because you've gotten an x-ray. You had laceration repair. You had to have a urine test. So what we do is, is we make it much easier for the patients. It's $120 and you, you can get your x-ray with that. Or you can get a urine analysis with that, or a rapid strep if you have a bad sore throat. And it's not a la carte and char charged more. 
uh, for that. And then the only things that would cost extra is in case, for example, you broke your arm and needed a splint and we had to fit you with a splint. So there are a few extra charges on top, but primarily the charge of $120 reaches most people. Oh, that's real reasonable. I tell you, I had to fix a dryer at the house just to get the guy to the house was $90. Exactly. And then I don't want to tell you, I almost want to buy a new one. So it really, you know, it's reasonable. My gosh. And an x-ray is included. And, you know, because you're right, there are a tremendous amount of folks out there, unfortunately, that don't have insurance. And, right. uh, but, and they, you know, and coming here and, 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 and is a much reasonable um, uh, event for them. And, um, uh, I, you know, I commend you for that for, because I think it's important to, uh, to reach out and give, give that service to those folks. Another service we, uh, we offer is we have quite a bit of medications mm -hmm. we keep here in-house mm -hmm. in the form of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in the form of some blood pressure medication refills right. and some other medications yeah. because a lot of people, their co-pays, mm -hmm. if they have insurance, mm -hmm. their co-pays are set at 10 or 20 or $30. And if they don't have insurance, you yeah. might get an antibiotic that costs $5 with a person with a great insurance yeah. and $100 yeah. if they don't have insurance. Yeah. So we have uh, quite a bit of medications yeah. here that we offer uh, for pa to patients on a very discounted yeah. level. I want to stop you, Doc, because this next topic is something close to me because I've barely been watching it grow. You mentioned it briefly on your website. You talk about ticks. Yes. Talk about uh, the problems in the Poconos with Lyme disease. This is an amazing year for Lyme disease. Last year in the Poconos at, at our center in Stroudsburg, I removed more ticks off of people than I had in my entire career. It was just a tremendous amount of ticks. And it seems that the ticks became slyer and, and sneakier this year because this year we've removed very few ticks, but I've seen more actual Lyme disease than I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow. Uh, just this year, people are coming in, they're missing the fact that they may have had a tick bite or missing the tick. And, and unfortunately, many people don't see the tick because it's somewhere in an area that you can't see. And then they come in with the rash or they don't even know the rash. According to the Centers for Disease Control, approximately 90 to 95% of people with Lyme disease have the rash at some point at the beginning, but only 50% of people see the rash. See the rash. Because the rash may be in your hair, in different places, the rash behind you, it's yeah. in your areas in your armpits, and you can't see the rash. Yeah. So people will come in with aches and chills and feeling sickly, and they're not sure what's going on. They'll come in, maybe it's the flu. Yeah. And it's our job to recognize always, maybe it's Lyme. That's that's one of the foremost things that is always on my mind. Mm -hmm. Could this be Lyme disease? Yeah. And of course, it's not just so simple as let's just test it because you can't just test somebody, somebody's blood because statistically at the time you see the rash for Lyme disease, only about 25% of people test positive. Wow. Within another 30 to 45 days, the rest of those people will test positive, but the rash is gone. And now you have a, a cluster of different symptoms that may be, be easy or may be very mysterious and yeah. you don't know. Yeah. So the, the goal is to try to catch it as early as possible and the treatment is very easy if you catch it in that initial window. Yeah, Doc, thank you. I might want to come back and do another thing, another show with you on Lyme, because to me, it, you know, to get people to realize and be careful. Look, when you're in the woods, be careful. Check yourself. Definitely, we yeah. have. I've got. I've got video blogs on my website. I've got mm -hmm. little rants on my uh, Facebook that are all about ticks and Lyme yeah. disease because we've seen so much of that this yeah. year. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you so much for allowing me to visit thank with you. you. Very much. It's been my pleasure. You've been watching Legislative Report. If you have any questions on any state-related matter or any questions on the, on the care here at the Pocono Care, uh, please uh, re reach out to my office. My address and phone number will be on in a moment. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Legislative Report.